As Mike Elias has said many times throughout spring training, there are 12 starting pitchers currently competing for five spots. But the question is, who are those five guys going to be? And what are their chances right now about three weeks from opening day? Well, I'm going to dive into that. The chances for all 12 of these guys to make the opening day roster as a starting pitcher, that's coming up on this episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast. You are Locked On Orioles, your daily Baltimore Orioles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Orioles fans. Today is Wednesday, March 8th, 2023. And welcome back in to the Locked On Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, Connor Newcomb. And coming up on today's episode, I'm going to take a look at all 12 starting pitchers that are in the running currently for the Orioles five-man opening day starting rotation and give you a percentage chance that each of these 12 pitchers makes the opening day rotation. From Kyle Gibson, who I believe is a 100% lock, all the way down to Drew Robb, who I don't think has much of a chance, at least at this point. But that's coming up on this episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast which is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started today. So let's jump right into it. Here's how I'm going to do it. Ranking these candidates 1 through 12 of the 12 guys that Mike Elias has talked about is in the running this spring training for the starting rotation. Elias has made it clear even the past couple of days, he went on the mass and broadcast on Monday. It's going to be a five-man rotation. It's not going to be a six-man rotation. And he's talked about how it's really tough to have a six-man rotation when you have the 13-pitcher limit that is now in place on the 26-man rosters in Major League Baseball. So with 13 pitchers, they're going to go with five guys in the rotation. Now, I know that a lot of Orioles fans, including myself, have kind of settled on five pitchers right now that they think and that they hope will be in this rotation. But let's go through what everybody's chances are. So let's start with the only guy I put as a 100% lock. The number one player on this list, no doubt lock, is Kyle Gibson. I've got him as a 100% lock. The reason why... Well, Mike Elias has said as much that Kyle Gibson is going to be in this rotation. I, you know, sometimes he's stretched the truth, but in this case, I would tend to believe him. Kyle Gibson got the largest contract that Mike Elias has ever given out as Orioles GM, a one-year $10 million free agent deal this offseason. And Gibson is a veteran with a solid track record, something that the O's don't have a lot of in this rotation. Made 31 starts for the Phillies last year through 167 innings. And yeah, it was a 5.05 ERA. The FIP was a little better, kind of an average K rate, an average walk rate. We've only seen him start one time so far this spring training. We've only seen two innings out of him in an Orioles uniform this spring. But everything is pointing to Kyle Gibson as a lock. And frankly, if you made me guess an Orioles opening day starter right now, you know, we're 22 days out from opening day, I still have no idea. But if you made me put money on one guy, I think I would put it on Kyle Gibson at this point. I mean, he's done it once before. He started opening day for Texas back in 2021. So at least he has that. I mean, nobody else in this rotation battle has started opening day. So that's helpful. He's talked about how much he likes pitching in Boston. That's where the Orioles go to open the season. And he is like the seasoned veteran, you know, 10 years in the big leagues that is on this team. And with no real proven number one, at least at this point, Grayson Rodriguez is not proven yet. I kind of feel like it's going to be Gibson, and he's certainly a 100% lock. The number two guy on this list, I almost put as a 100% lock, but I decided to go with a 95% chance to make the rotation, and that is the left-hander Cole Irvin, who the Orioles acquired via trade from the Oakland Athletics earlier this offseason, a trade for Daryl Hernandez, And Irvin, who's just had back-to-back -back solid seasons where he stayed healthy and pitched in length, for the Athletics, made 30 starts for Oakland last year, 181 innings, had a 3.98 ERA. And again, not much of a strikeout pitcher, but pitches in the zone, doesn't walk a lot of guys, and pitches deep into games. And again, 181 innings, that would have led the Orioles last year. He is an innings eater, and he does kind of replace Jordan Lyles in that role. Now, when Elias has said multiple times this offseason that Kyle Gibson is going to be in the rotation, 
He has pretty much every time also mentioned Cole Irvin in that same sentence that Cole Irvin is also going to be in the rotation. The only reason I put Irvin at 95% instead of 100 is that Cole Irvin does still have one minor league option left. And listen, he's already made two starts this spring. He's looked good, only given up one run over five innings of work. So there's been no you know, terrible blow up so far that make you think, eh, maybe the O's are worried about him getting a rotation spot. And there's no one kind of lower on this list that's been so freaking amazing that the O's are pushing Cole Irvin out. But because he does have the minor league option, and because a guy like you know Kyle Gibson does not, you know, a 10-year major league veteran, if something really weird happened with the roster, some of these guys lower on the list, like you know, Austin Voth or Mike Bauman or Spencer Watkins were just dominating people and everybody else was dominating. And Cole Irvin had, you know, the rest of his spring trading outings were just terrible. There is that ever so slight chance that maybe because they can without having to DFA and they would send him to AAA for a couple of weeks. That's the only reason why I put it at 95%, but he's, he's almost basically a lock at this point. Number three on this list, I went with Dean Kramer. I put Dean Kramer at an 80% chance at this point to make the rotation. Now, you could argue he could be higher, and I would listen to that argument. I mean, Kramer had a great year last season, missed the first two months with that oblique injury, but once he came back, got a rotation spot, made 21 starts through 125 innings, had a 3.23 ERA last season, was really, really good down the stretch for the Orioles in August and September. And had an amazing bounce back year after a disastrous 2021 when he spent most of the year in AAA because he just couldn't get anybody out at the big league level after a promising debut in 2020. So it was really good from Dean Kramer, but there's a couple of reasons why he's not higher than 80%. One, you know, he's about to leave in, I believe, tomorrow for the WBC to pitch for Team Israel. And Brandon Hyde revealed Tuesday that he's going to pitch on March 12th it looks like. So this Sunday, he'll pitch in Team Israel's game, get the start in that one. Now, there's a 65 pitch count for the first round of games, so Kramer will not be allowed to throw more than 65 pitches, and we know the Orioles are completely in contact with that Team Israel coaching staff about how they're going to handle Dean Kramer, and I'm not really counting injury issues into this equation, but there's always the chance that something happens with him going to the WBC that just throws off the rhythm a little bit where something odd happens where he has to start you know, out of the bullpen for the first week or two of the season, and then the O's move him into the rotation. And there is the other point where, yeah, he had a good year last year, but it was still only 125 innings. 2021 was a disaster. I mean, he still hasn't had a full, solid big league season. He's still unproven, and there's still question marks. But again, I do think he's going to be in the rotation. Number four on the list I put as Kyle Bradish. He's right there with Dean Kramer. I gave Bradish a 75% chance of making this opening day rotation. And it's kind of similar reasons to Kramer, not with the World Baseball Classic, obviously, but he hasn't had a full good big league season. He came up and made his debut in the O's rotation in late April of last year. And, you know, he had that really good start in St. Louis, but generally was not good, then goes on the injured list for a couple months with that shoulder injury. But when he came back, he added that sinker, he moved to a different side of the rubber, and he did become a different pitcher. Now, at the end of the year, it was 23 starts, 118 innings, a 4.90 ERA, you know, about league average Ks and walks, but he was a very different pitcher down the stretch, kind of like Dean Kramer was. And so it puts him in kind of the same spot. You know, he's been good. He's been really good this spring training. Five innings, four Ks, one walk, one run allowed, just two hits. He's looked solid in his two starts he's made so far. Nothing saying he's not going to be in the rotation. It's just... He's still unproven. I mean, even though last year he finished strong, that was nowhere close to a full big league season. And that was his first time ever getting the big league. So there are still certainly questions about Kyle Bradish. And that's why he's down at 75%. But again, another guy I do think he's going to be in the rotation. And I think those four pitchers, Gibson, Irvin, Kramer, and Bradish, I think most Orioles fans and people that cover the team kind of agree that at least those four are going to be in this opening day rotation as long as all four of them stay healthy. After those top four is where some more questions come in. And obviously big question number one is, is Grayson Rodriguez that fifth guy or does someone like Tyler Wells or Austin Voth or Spencer Watkins slip back into the rotation? We will get to that as we continue this list, ranking these percentages coming up next. But first, This episode of the Locked On Orioles podcast is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel. 
America's number one sports book. Because new customers, they get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, it's secure, and it's super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drain. And for me, I'm more of a casual NBA fan. I definitely would call myself a Washington Wizards fan, but in watching the Wizards, I feel like two things are going to happen. One, they're probably going to lose, so I'd take their opponent money line, and there's going to be a lot of points scored in the game. So I'd probably take the over and take the opponent in any Wizards game coming up this week. And FanDuel, they even let you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. So today I am rolling through the Orioles' 12 starting rotation candidates, giving them all a percentage chance from 1 to 12 of making the rotation. And the first four guys I've talked about, Gibson, Irvin, Kramer, and Bradish, I give all of them at least a 75% chance. I think most people think all those guys will be in the rotation. So the question becomes, who's the number five starter? And at number five, I'm going to put Grayson Rodriguez and give him a 65% chance of making this opening day rotation, right around two-thirds. We know how good Rodriguez is. He's the top pitching prospect in the system. When he was healthy last year in 14 starts, about 70 innings, he had a 2.20 ERA. He had a 36% strikeout rate. League average is 22. Still had a league average walk rate to go with it. He's been pretty good in two spring training starts. He looked a little shaky at times on Tuesday in his start. Went two and two-thirds. A run on three hits, four Ks, two walks, and a homer through 55 pitches. Did give up six hard hit balls, but also got six whiffs, three on his fastball, three on his changeup, and his fastball was sitting 97 to 99 throughout those 55 pitches that he threw as he continues to get built up. Mike Elias, you know, said it on Mass and Monday, has continued to say it that he sees Rodriguez in this opening day rotation. And I just feel like if he's healthy, and we know it could be a question because he missed three months last year with the lat injury, and that kept him from making his debut in 2022. But if he stays healthy, it feels like he's got himself an opening day rotation spot. Now, you may ask, well, why is it not higher than 65% then? Well, one thing is there's seven other candidates, and all seven of those candidates have thrown a big league inning. And all seven of those candidates have made a start for the Orioles before. Grayson Rodriguez has not done any of those things. So they at least have a leg up on him. Now, he's better than all those guys. He has a higher ceiling than all those guys. And he's the top pitching prospect, you could argue, in baseball and definitely in the Orioles system. And he's ready to go. But there's also the little bit in the back of your mind that thinks, would the Orioles manipulate his service time? Because if they kept him in AAA for another six weeks or so, they could potentially get an extra year on the end of his rookie deal. Now, there's new things in the CBA trying to combat that. You know, if Rodriguez and Henderson were to finish 1-2 in the rookie of the year voting, or you'd have, you know, Rodriguez to have a chance to finish top two, the O's can get an extra draft pick. I get all that. If he's on the opening day roster, they get that. But... You know, if the O's were really banking on Henderson winning AL Rookie of the Year anyway, they take the draft pick there. Would they consider, I mean, he doesn't have anything else to prove in AAA, but would they consider that, bla I mean, that would be Chris Bryant levels or maybe worse levels of service time manipulation right there. But I can't say they've shown me anything that makes me think they won't do it. So that's why he's only down at 65%. But I do think he's going to be the fifth member of the rotation. But if it's not him, number six on the list, I put Tyler Wells. I gave Tyler Wells a 30% chance of making the opening day rotation. I think the number one reason why he's that high is he did it last year. I mean, Wells made 23 starts for the Orioles last year. Would have been more had he not gone down with a couple of odd injuries in the second half of the season. But through about 104 innings, had a 4-2-5 ERA. He wasn't amazing. He was just solid for, you know, five or six innings at a time pretty much every time he went out there and he became a different pitcher. You know, he was a big time, big stuff strikeout guy as a reliever, as a rookie in 2021, he kind of pulled the stuff back and attacked guys more and walked less guys, but also struck out less guys as a starter in 2022, but it was still effective 
on the back end of the Orioles rotation. And I know his first start this spring didn't go great. You know, he gave up three runs on five hits over two innings the other day, but he's still in line to be a lock on this roster, whether he's in the bullpen or as a starter, and he's done both. So, you know, he can do both roles for the Orioles and he slimmed down his body this off season. Andy Koska had a good article in the Baltimore banner this week about, you know, Tyler Wells and, and what he's dealt with uh, just with, with his eating and with his mental health and with his body as well. And I think he's the next man up there. He's going to be on the roster either way. It's just, they have better starting options at this point. And also Wells, He's shown he can be really, really good and pretty dominant times out of the bullpen if he does go there. Seventh on the list, I went with Mike Bauman. Gave him a 20% chance of making this opening day rotation. And frankly, if you had asked me this two weeks ago, I would have put Mike Bauman at like a 5% chance. But he's just out of spring training games. His two appearances has been good enough to raise him up this list. Five innings. Two runs, three hits, but eight Ks to three walks in those five innings. The stuff has looked really, really good for Mike Bauman. I saw a stat about stuff plus. Mike Bauman's fastball was top five of any pitcher in spring training so far this year in MLB. That's pretty impressive for Mike Bauman. And listen, last year, you know, he, he made four starts for the Orioles, made some relief appearances through 34 innings, had a 472 ERA. He was better in AAA when he was in Norfolk and he was kind of up and down most of the year with the O's. We thought maybe they'd move him full-time to a reliever, but they still had him starting a lot in Norfolk. And again, he did start four games for the Orioles. So they still see him as a starter and he's been good here in spring training. I just think he's further behind the eight ball. And he was behind guys like both Watkins and Wells for starting spots throughout the season last year. So he's definitely moved his way up. And I think he still has a solid chance to make the opening day roster out of the bullpen, especially with Dylan Tate injured. And D.L. Hall, you know, maybe going to AAA. We'll get to him in a bit. And I think Bauman could be like the last guy on the roster. Just don't know if it's going to be as a starter, but I think he still does have a chance. Number eight on the list, I put Spencer Watkins, giving him a 15% chance to make this opening day rotation. Big reason why Watkins is as high as 15 is that, well, he's pitched really well in spring training. I mean, he threw in the game on Tuesday, threw three more great innings, one run, did give up five hits and a strikeout, but no walks. He got five whiffs. His cutter velocity was up two to three miles an hour. You know, he's throwing that pitch 90-91 now, and that was the swing and miss pitch on the day as well. Listen, Watkins made 20 starts last year, 105 innings, a, a formidable 4.70 ERA, kept the Orioles in a lot of games as, as basically their number five starter throughout the 2022 season. And Brandon Hyde talked about Watkins when he was speaking with the media a little bit on Tuesday and just said that, you know, Watkins shouldn't be overlooked and he's earned a, a chance to, to win a spot in this rotation with what he gave the O's last season. And I agree with that. It's just, he's kind of behind the eight ball. He's pitched well this spring training, but you know, it hasn't been in starts. It's been in relief appearances, which means he's facing the backups that come in, in the spring training games. And also it doesn't feel like his stuff is really going to play well out of the bullpen. So he almost feels like he has to be a starter or he's going to be in triple a as a starter. And I see it more likely him being in Norfolk, but I like what he's given the O's and, and he still does have, I think a small chance here, but there's four more guys to get to. And I feel like the next four don't have great chances, but coming up next, we'll explain why these last four guys probably aren't going to see themselves in the rotation, at least to start the year. So as I rank the chances of all these Orioles starting pitchers, their chances of getting into the opening day starting rotation, we come to the final four guys, numbers nine through 12. And we start with Austin Voth, who I talked about a lot on Tuesday's episode. If you missed it, go check it out after he had a pretty rough appearance on Monday in his second spring training outing. Listen, Voth has given up five runs on seven hits over five innings so far this spring training. I'm giving him a 14% chance to make the roster, just 1% below Spencer Watkins. And I put them both in the same boat because they surprisingly had success for the Orioles as a starting pitcher in 2022. And, you know, they don't have the greatest stuff in the world, but they've had stuff that's been fixed by the Orioles to make them better. After Voth came over from the Nationals on waivers last year, he threw 83 innings, five, just five relief appearances. It was 17 starts for the Orioles. And had a 3.04 ERA with a 3.96 FIP. I mean, he was really good, but he never pitched past five innings in any of those 17 starts for the Orioles. And when you look what he did, you were always kind of worried that it was going to blow up, and it hasn't looked good this spring training. And 
the one thing about Voth versus Watkins, the reason why I put Watkins at 15% and Voth at 14% is that what I mentioned about Watkins, it feels like he wouldn't be a reliever. So if the O's did keep him, it would have to be a starter. That gives him one tick over Voth because Voth can be a reliever. He'd been a reliever for Washington for a while. Again, he made five relief appearances for the Orioles last year. I think the stuff shows he can be good out of the bullpen if the Orioles put him there. I do think he'll make the opening day roster. And I think it will be as a reliever. So that you know gives him that spot. And that's why he's down just a tick below at 14%. Tenth on the list is DL Hall. And his percentages has changed a lot in the last two weeks. But I have DL Hall at just a 5% chance of making the opening day rotation. And that's not because of his talent or his stuff. If he were fully healthy, he'd probably be at number six right now. And up around 40, 45, maybe 50%. But here's the reality of the situation. He had a little bit of a back issue coming into spring training. They're building him up. You know, he's throwing bullpens, but he hasn't thrown in the game yet. And Brandon Hyde said it plain and simple last week. Hall is not going to be built up to be ready to be a big league starter by opening day. So unless, you know, a miracle happens with his health, that's the only reason why I have it at 5%, just in case he gets built up really fast and is ready. Now, the only other thing that could happen that goes into this 5% is if the Orioles still decided just to put him in the rotation and have him go, you know, three innings in his first couple of starts or four innings and had someone like Tyler Wells or Mike Bauman or Austin Voth ready to follow him in long relief. Those two things combined are really the only reason he gets 5% because the Orioles have said as much. He's just not going to be built up to be a big league starter. And the O's have, as we talked about, 11 other options that are going to be built up to be a big league starter. And I've got nine guys ahead of him in terms of percentages on this list. And we know how good he was in AAA last year. He's 77 innings, a 4.70 ERA, but a 36% strikeout rate. And, you know, he made the most of his big league time. His start wasn't, his one start wasn't great in the bigs, but as he went down the stretch, his relief appearances got better and better. And he did have a 30% strikeout rate. We know how good the stuff is. We know the Orioles still see him as a starting pitcher, while some people at this point have written him off as, as you know, a really good reliever, but just a reliever moving forward. And I don't know what the O's are going to do, but he's, he's not going to be a starter. They've said that, at least in the big leagues, to start the year. It's either going to be a big league reliever or a triple A starter to build him up when the 2023 season begins. And we'll just have to see what that role becomes for DL Hall. Number 11 on the list, I have Bruce Zimmerman. And I contemplated giving him 0%, but I'm going to give Bruce Zimmerman a 1% chance of making this rotation just because. If you think he could somehow bottle up those first seven starts of 2022 when he was really, really good and was the Orioles' best starting pitcher, then that's why he has the 1%. And he's been solid in spring training. Five innings, two runs, four Ks, and no walks so far for Zimmerman. You know, the big home run ball that just destroyed him last year and sent him to AAA hasn't been as much of a problem. By the end of the year last year, it was 74 innings and a 5.99 ERA in the bigs, but he did have a 3.77 ERA in AAA in 76 innings after the O's sent him back down when he couldn't stop giving up homers. He still got an outside chance, but I think we all realize Zimmerman's going to be in the Tides rotation to start the year. And then the last guy on the list, that is Drew Rahm. I put him 12th dead last, and I'm giving him a 0% chance. I really like Drew Rahm. He's one of the O's top pitching prospects. He's a top 20 prospect in the system, but he's still very, very young. He's only had seven career starts in AAA last year, 38 innings, a 4.54 ERA, 26% strikeout rate to an 11% walk rate. He was still mostly in AA Bowie last year. He made 19 starts in Bowie and a 4.37 ERA before he came up and made those final seven starts with the Tides. Now he's made one spring training start on the first day and two innings, a run, two hits, two Ks and a walk, and it was solid stuff, but he's not ready yet. And I honestly don't think Rom will pitch in the big leagues at all in 2023, let alone make the opening day starting rotation. And that's not much against him. It's just the O's have more options, more experienced options. I think Mike Elias is going to give him a full year in the Tides rotation, and he could crack the big leagues by the end of the year. And he is on the 40-man roster now, which is good for him. But I think he's more of a 2024 rotation option for the Orioles. But there it is, 1 through 12, my chances for all these pitchers getting into the rotation, Gibson at 100, Irvin at 95, Kramer at 80, Bradish at 75%, Rodriguez at 65, Wells at 30, 
Bauman at 20, Watkins at 15, Voth at 14, Hall at 5, Zimmerman at 1, and Rahm at 0. That is to make the Orioles opening day starting rotation. And things are going to change. More of these guys are going to get starts throughout the year, but that's how I see it right now on March 8th. Thank you so much for tuning in, for watching this episode, for listening. Make sure to like, subscribe to the pod wherever you listen. Like, comment, and subscribe to the Locked on Orioles YouTube page as well. Thank you so much to everyone who has done that already. We're getting closer, 22 days until opening day, but we got some fun episodes to finish out the week here. Coming up Thursday and Friday this week, we are bringing back our Orioles minor league draft. We did this last year for the first time with Nick, Zach, and Bob from the great Orioles minor league podcast, BSL on the Verge. And those three guys are joining me once again for the next two episodes. It'll be split up into two parts, Orioles minor league draft. All four of us will be drafting a full team of Orioles minor leaguers. You'll get to listen or watch the next two episodes. And then this weekend, you all will get to vote on who put together the best team in the Orioles minor league draft. And then we will track it throughout the year, how those players do. But that'll get started coming up on tomorrow's episode. But until then, I'm Connor Newcomb, and this has been the Locked On Orioles podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team, every day.